400, Fire and Overheat Protection, Part 2. In Part 2, we will cover cargo fire protection, crew rest and lavatory smoke detection, and the fire and overheat system test. Let's begin with lower cargo fire protection. The cargo fire warning lights and extinguisher control switches are located on the overhead panel. There are two lower cargo compartments, forward and aft. Each compartment has fire detection. Each lower cargo compartment has four detectors. Sample air in each compartment is drawn by a Venturi through the detectors from multiple pickup points that cover the length of a compartment. The ICAS advisory message, cargo detector air, is displayed if there is insufficient sample airflow for smoke detection. Each detector contains two smoke sensor loops, A and B. During normal system operation, both the A and B sensor loops must detect smoke to produce a fire signal. Fault monitoring of the sensor loops occurs only when the fire protection system is tested. If a fault is detected in one sensor, the system automatically configures itself for single loop operation. System test will be discussed later in this module. In single loop configuration, the operating sensor is capable of generating a cargo fire signal. The ICAS warning message, Fire Cargo Forward, or Fire Cargo Aft, indicates a fire condition in that compartment. A cargo fire warning light also illuminates. The message and light remain until smoke is no longer detected. Pushing either the forward cargo fire arm switch or the aft cargo fire arm switch turns off pack 2 and 3, turns off all fans, arms the discharge squibs, configures equipment cooling to the override mode, turns off all airflow and heat into the lower cargo compartments. Now let's look at lower cargo fire extinguishing. There are four bottles that provide fire extinguishing for both compartments. Bottles A, B, C, and D. There are two squibs for each fire extinguisher bottle. One squib on each bottle is for the forward compartment. The other is for the aft compartment. The four fire extinguisher bottles may be discharged into either compartment. Lifting the guard and pushing the cargo fire discharge switch initiates the automatic discharge sequence for the four armed cargo extinguisher bottles. Pushing the discharge switch discharges bottles A and B immediately. Bottles C and D are time released and do not immediately discharge. The ICAS advisory message, Cargo Bottle Discharge, is displayed when bottles A and B have discharged. The bottle discharged light illuminates. Bottles C and D will automatically discharge after a brief delay and maintain metered flow for three hours of extinguishing. The four bottles provide a total of 210 minutes of extinguishing. The ICAS advisory message, Cargo Bottle Discharge, remains displayed when bottles C and D have discharged.
Question. Answer A is correct. Question. Answer C is correct. Now let's look at main deck cargo fire protection in two parts. Main deck smoke detection and main deck fire suppression. The main deck cargo fire warning light, extinguishing arming switch, and the depressurization switches are located on the overhead panel. The main deck cargo compartment has three major fire detection areas, main deck forward, mid, and aft. The main deck cargo compartment has a total of 16 smoke detector modules. Each detector module has two photosensor loops. The main deck cargo compartment detectors function the same as the lower cargo compartment detectors. The ICAS warning message fire main deck forward, middle, or aft indicates a main deck cargo compartment fire condition. The main cargo fire warning light also illuminates. The message and light remain until smoke is no longer detected. If a fire is detected in more than one area, the individual ICAS messages will be inhibited and the ICAS message fire main deck will be displayed. Pushing the main deck cargo fire arm switch enables main deck depressurization, turns off packs 2 and 3, configures equipment cooling to the closed loop mode, turns off all airflow to the main deck, and turns off all airflow and heat to lower cargo compartments. Now let's look at main deck fire suppression. If the main deck fire arm switch has been armed, pushing the cargo fire depressurization discharge switch initiates a controlled depressurization of the entire airplane to 25,000 feet MSL. The depressurization rate is initially 9,000 feet per minute until 20,000 feet, then 2,500 feet per minute until a cabin altitude of 25,000 feet is attained. Airflow to the main deck and lower lobes is turned off. The remaining operational pack enters a low flow mode, providing only enough conditioned air to the upper deck zones for passenger comfort and preventing lower deck smoke from entering upper deck passenger areas. Let's now look at crew rest and lavatory smoke detection. Smoke detectors are installed in the crew rest area on the upper deck. The ICAS caution message, smoke crew rest, indicates smoke is detected in the crew rest area. A smoke detector is also installed in the lavatory. Oral warning will sound in the lavatory area if smoke is detected in the lavatory. An automatic extinguisher system is located beneath the lavatory sink. Now let's look at the tests of the fire and overheat detection systems. There is an automatic test and a manual test for the engine fire and overheat. APU fire, and cargo smoke detection systems. The wheel well fire detection system and the wing bleed duct leak detection systems are only tested by the manual test. 
An automatic test occurs each time electrical power is initially applied. There are no flight deck indications during a satisfactory auto test. The manual test may be accomplished any time. This test is the same as the power-up test, except there are flight deck indications during a manual test. The manual fire overheat test switch is located on the overhead panel. Pushing the fire overheat test switch rings the fire bell and illuminates the master warning lights. Pushing the fire overheat test switch illuminates the engine fire warning lights, the APU fire warning light, the forward and aft cargo fire warning lights, and the fuel control switch lights. Pushing the switch also displays the ICAS warning message, Test in Prague, for the duration of the test. On successful completion of the test, the warning message Fire Test Pass is displayed. If a system failure is detected, the warning message Fire Test Fail is displayed. Messages indicating which systems have failed are also displayed. Releasing the test switch extinguishes all lights and removes the test messages. Question. Answer C is correct. Answer C is correct. This concludes fire and overheat protection.